Malcolm Louie here. Welcome to Eversprint.com. Today we're speaking with Todd Swickard, the co-founder and CEO of Smart One Marketing, a fast-growing provider of digital marketing services who partners with media companies around the globe. Todd grew his company's revenues from $1.7 million in 2014 to $5.1 million in 2017, a 208% increase, and now they're on track to hit $6.9 million this year. Welcome to the call, Todd. Thanks, Malcolm. So, Todd, how did you do it? How did you grow your company sales so fast? <laughs> um, I, well, we herded up a few unicorns um, and then started to feed them uh, magical pixie dust. Um, and uh, after that, that was uh, they just started breeding themselves, and and uh, things started to happen. Awesome. Mm hmm. All right. Now we do. Uh, we have a, a pretty firm philosophy and you know this is um been in the industry for a long time so our goal has been to make sure that we take care of our customers um provide them with an awesome experience uh, um and provide them with as much support as as we can give them uh and we do that through a, a variety of different ways one we, we make sure our folks are um up to knowledge uh, every day and, and constantly learning of all the new trends, tricks, and and wonderful digital uh, spaces that are out there that are constantly changing and, and creates a, a roadblock for a lot of um, SMBs and mid-sized businesses. Um, other part of our business is, is we work with media companies across the country where we are actually their fulfillment center um, for their sales reps. So if, if you have a, a broadcaster or a, a radio station or a, a magazine and they're selling uh, a complement of digital services, we actually work with their sellers and their management team um, to increase revenues on the digital side. And, and a lot of times, you know, they're, they're losing money from traditional media and it's going to digital. This is a way for them to recapture some of those revenues that are that are slipping away. Um, we created a, a, a system, um, you know, from from listening to our customers of uh, from the sales side, where we, we provide them an app to help sell. Um, from the fulfillment side, where they have uh, reporting dashboards that they can understand, that the customer can understand and see the results. Um, we take it very personally um, when, a, when we get a customer on and, and we don't like to lose customers. Um, we, you know, our, our churn rate is um, extremely low when it comes to our industry. Um, our, our goal is not to have uh, re-educate a customer or re-educate one of our clients. Our goal is to constantly make them um, fulfilled and satisfied with what they have out there and how they can put that together. So our system has been very successful in, in pushing that. So over time, we, we keep it um, so they can enhance um, their value proposition. We teach them how to sell and, and upsell and you know start them slow um, with the basics of, of blocking and tackling of what they need to do um, within their business but really try to understand their business and, and how they make money. Because if they're not successful, they're not going to buy more product. And if they're not going to buy more product, they're, they, you know, we, we don't find a way to increase our revenues. Um, so that's, that's really the, the short version of it. Right. Uh, you, you said at the very beginning that, that um, how you, you keep your clients aware of new trends that are occurring. Can you share some of those trends that you're seeing that are, that are occurring? Um, the trends that are out there, uh, you know, everybody likes the bright, shiny object um, that's, a, that's available to them. Um, you know, you, you hear Snapchat and you hear, you know, it was Twitter and then it was Facebook and then it was, oh, you got to have all these contents. Oh, you got to have all these blogs. Each business, um, the, the trend changes um, of depending on where they're. Uh, you know, their goals are. Um, if you're a roofer, nobody really cares uh, if you're tweeting, right? Nobody cares about their shingles um, 
when they don't need it. Um, but everybody goes, oh, I got to be on Twitter. Well, a lot of times we see businesses and companies that waste tons of money out there, you know, chasing kind of um, what they've heard in the industry or what the latest trend is. Um, you know, it, it comes down to 90% of the businesses, it's still a book and tackle. It, it's still basic marketing. Um, when it comes to digital marketing, you know, IP targeting is just a replacement for uh, direct mail. Um, you know, Google is, is uh, in their locations are essentially the new yellow pages. Um, a website is nothing more than what a brochure was. Um, and I, people in my industry hate when I simplify it like that. But to get a customer to understand that you don't have to have, you know, all the bells and whistles and follow every trend. And 90% and of the time, you're not Toyota, you're not Ford. Um, where you have these budgets and the resources to kind of explore some of these uh, crazy new things that are out there. The, the, trends, the trends that we see, um, you know, search has, search has always been there. Um, you know, and, and we always say, hey, you know, let's look at ways that you can engage the customer. Um, and so we, we looked at creating um, a new website platform that we rolled out called smart one sites and that has become you know how do we make it easier for the customer what we've seen now i think one of the biggest trends that nobody talks about um, is very simply all these things that used to be hard uh, three years ago have become very simple and very um, easy to create something that's professional looking that has the enhancements that five years ago would have cost you a fortune. Um, now now it, it's become available to that SMB um, to compete as sometimes on a level that, you know, is an enterprise system out there. And we want to make sure that they can push that way. Right. Yeah, it's amazing what technology has done in terms of bringing people literally closer together and, and getting work done today that is just unimaginable five years from, the, five, from, five, year, from five years ago. Right. Yep. And, and just, you know, the, the trend is it's going to get easier for an SMB. It's going to get, you know, it, we, we have a saying around our office that it has to be drunk and monkey proof. And, and when <laughs> we say it's drunk and, drunk and monkey proof, if you ever seen, you know, a, a monkey in a, on a computer, you just pound on the computer praying that it, you know, changes screens or it, it does what he wants it to do. Um, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of clients, a lot of people out there, um, you know, that are, are customers from the, the B2C side, you know, they want it easy. They want it simple. Um, you know, if, if we as businesses sometimes are too close to the fire and overthink it way too many times of, well, it's got to have this and it's got to have this and, you know, they got to go through this process. And one of the, the things that we always suggest is, you know, hey, can you have somebody that doesn't work in your business um, step back and look at this, you know, and, and ask them. Um, I'm always a big fan of, of taking it to my mom because if there's something broke or if there's something they're going to complain about, um, you know, my mom's in her late 60s and, and she can look and go, I don't understand it. I don't know how to get here. Okay, well, you know, if I can if I can get it past my mom, then a lot of times it's a uh, – you know, uh, it's a challenge, um, but sometimes there's things we don't look at, especially for the folks that are, you know, in the business or in the technology side of, oh, this is great, you know, but regular people hate this, right? So we got to try to find a way around it. Yeah, you, you can always tell products and systems and services that were designed by someone who doesn't use them. Mm -hmm. I yeah. They're like horrendous. Yeah, we classify a, a lot of folks out there in, in different categories. You know, you have the designers and the dreamers that, you know, want to make a site as a work of art. Um, you have the techie guys uh, that, you know, want to add every bell and whistle to it and, and make sure all these functions and all these things are, are interlaced. Um, we kind of uh, present ourselves as kind of the, the block and tackle. You know what? We're going to make it. Uh, functional. We're going to make it pretty, right? Is it going to be the prettiest? No, probably not, right? I'm sure there's somebody who can make it prettier than us. Is it going to be the most cool thing in the world? 
it's going to be close, but it's, it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to spend millions of dollars trying to get somebody to understand that they don't have, um, you know, the latest, greatest technology out there and they need to spend $50,000 instead of $5,000 to get the same results. Right. Yeah, I, I've been doing uh, other interviews with other fast-growing companies, and, and part of my research is visiting their website. And I have to say, just like what you just mentioned, these the websites they have are functional. They're not the prettiest. They don't have the f every single fancy little tool, but it's been good enough for their needs to you know grow their fast, grow their business you know astronomically fast, just like how you have with your business as well. Right. Right. And ironically, you know, there's still, um, a, you know, there's still a understanding with clients that you want them to, you know, you, you still have to talk to clients. You still have to help them understand. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, we reinforce to our, our sellers and our resellers of talk to the client. Just listen to their problems and solve a problem for them. Right, and then they're they're happy. Um, where if you, you try to overcomplicate it and, and find magical ways to do it, then it just you know it, it does nothing but frustrate the customer. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to your numbers, where you went from 1.7 million in 2014 to 5.1 million in 2017, uh, now looking to hit 6.9 million in 2018. Where is that growth coming from? Is it coming from new clients, more clients that you're working with? Is it coming from doing more business with your current clients? Um, yes, yes, and yes. Um, we don't really, um, we're not a traditional business. Um, ironically, um, as a uh, marketing company, we don't do much marketing. Um, and <laughs> that sounds crazy, um, but ours has come from referrals. So when it comes to our side of it and, and working with uh, getting new clients, um, a lot of folks will, will come from, you know, ABC station in Columbus, Ohio, to a CBS station in, in Portland, Oregon. Um, and they, they bring us along, take us, uh, take us with them uh, because we've proven the success in, in the different markets that they've had to deal with us in. Um, so when we grab clients, um, a lot of them are referrals, um, folks that have worked, uh, with, um, partners of ours, um, and know, know of us, um, pretty good at the crisis management and coming in and, and fixing something, um, because we've seen it all, um, over, over the last couple of years. Um, we have a, a team that's, you know, uh, highly, um, skilled and, and highly experienced. You know, we've done everything that we're asking them to do. So we want to make it as, as possible for them. So with our with our existing client base, we actually work with them. Uh, so when we're when we're as a, as a as a partner is evolving within our ecosystem, we teach them how to not only upsell their existing clients, but also find ways to go out there and, and capture new industries capture new clients that they may have never touched before. So every single year, our, our, our clients are, are raising the bar and, and coming forward on that side. So as, you're, as, you help your, as you help your clients grow and go into new verticals, find new markets, does your compensation, does, does what they pay your firm also increase? Yes. So we have uh, in in our business a, a pretty unique uh, way that we uh, push things out there. Um, all of our contracts are 30 days, so every single month we're on the hook uh, to make sure that a customer is is happy. Um, and as they continue uh, buying products from us and increasing their brand base, um, it it actually benefits us on our side too. Hmm. Okay. Can you share perhaps uh, uh, how that works with one of your clients or maybe a hypothetical client so that I can understand better and also the people who are listening can understand better? Sure. So say if we have a uh, newspaper in Bangor, Maine, um, they bring us in 
um, to help sell and market to their existing client base that they have out there. Um, so they'll sell them a print product, but they'll also go back and, and try to sell them a, a digital product that goes along with it. Um, as time marches on, you know, we always say it's, it's friends and family that they kind of go after first. After that, um, and time marches on, we get them to go after, hey, maybe we go after a B2B, somebody that may have not been in their print publications before. And what that does is give them the ability to enhance their, their customer base, right? So things that they may have never thought to sell um, as a newspaper or as a, as a digital agency that they may have formed. Uh, now they have the ability to go out and touch those clients and they feel confident with it and they know what they're selling and they become a strategic partner of them. Right. So is, is your company's compensation based on your client's revenue? Is it like that simple or is it much yep, more complex? Yeah, it's that simple. Nope. It's that simple. So as, as they sell more of our products, we are able to dive deeper into it, um, push in and uh, increase our revenues as, as they're buying more products and selling more products to their clients. Can you share the, the kinds of products that your clients are selling, you, you, the products that your clients are selling of yours? Sure. Um, we put it together like on, on smart one suites. And so we kind of have a, um, a wide range of products and the products, uh, go from everything from a WordPress site to a, a smart one site, which is on a platform that we built, um, to a Shopify site um, or a Shopify uh, partner. Um, so on the e-commerce side, we do search engine optimization for our clients. We do local listings. Um, we do uh, what we call adjustable targeting plans, which is, uh, some people know it as uh, the wonderful world of uh, programmatic display. Um, so we're out there finding audiences and advertising to those audiences, um, you know, on, on whatever site that they might be on. Um, we do IP targeting. Um, we do direct mail campaigns and drip campaigns um, for, for our clients. Um, we give them a, a social media strategy. So here's what you need to do. Here's how we can help you um, and put together those programs. We buy uh, video and over the top, um, the over the top boxes. So the, the cord cutters, we're able to touch them. Um, we sell everything um, when it comes to digital radio. So whether it's Pandora, Spotify, iHeart, um, MS, ESPN radio, um, we can push that out there. So, so you pretty much do almost everything under the sun when it comes to uh, uh, digital marketing and, and, uh, and e-commerce to a large degree. For the example you gave before of the Bangalore, Maine uh, newspaper, right? how are they reselling your services into the new and different verticals and markets? So they have, while we partner with um, you know, why, why we've partnered over the years with media companies is they've had a huge relationship with clients. Um, they've been able to, whether it's a newspaper, you know, they, they've sold things, they have a trusted relationship. So we partner with them to, to go out and touch those. I mean, they have all the statistics, they have um, all the understanding of, of what's out there. So we can go back and, and help them uh, reapproach their clients with things that they may have not have had in the past. Okay. Um, can you give example of how this uh, newspaper in, in Maine might approach one of their clients and then they would be reselling one of your products or services to that client? Sure. So say it's, uh, let's just go with a simple insurance agent. Right. So a lot of times the insurance agent has um, sold, you know, they've, they've advertised in the paper and now they want to find a way to, to reach folks online. So we'll work with them to help them analyze their site. You know, do they need a new site? And we can quote them a site. If, if they're not showing up in the local listings, we can, we can expedite that side of it. Um, if they're trying to sell life insurance to females that are married with school-aged children, we can find that audience and market out there. 
um, we can give them an ability to touch um, the 18 to 35 year old with streaming um, streaming radio and, and push that out there instead of the traditional um, uh, uh, terrestrial radio that's out there. So we find a solution that that works with it for them. So, so is your media partner the the main newspaper? Are they just making an introduction to you, or are they? reselling your services on a white label basis to their clients? A lot of our uh, clients will actually uh, uh, go through and it, it depends on the media. Uh, it depends on the agency or it depends on the, the partner that we have out there. Some of them will just uh, bring us in as a strategic partner um, that works with them. Some of them completely white label our services. Okay. So what, what's, which, which do you prefer, working as a white label provider or as a strategic partner? Um, you know, I, I don't know if I have a – in different situations, it, it works well in both. You know, we get a little schizophrenic around here when we're all white labeled, um, you know, because we have to be whoever we are that day. Um, but, you know, most of the time it's, it's uh, completely simple and, you know, kind of we all, we're all used to it. Right. So how much of your business would you say came from uh, referrals where people move jobs and they bring you on board as opposed to you successfully helping your existing clients grow their book of business further and then you in turn uh, participate in their growth? Um, it's probably about a 60-40 a split uh, when it comes to our new business comes from a, a lot of referrals um, that are out there. Um, and then that 40% would be um, the folks that are, uh, you know, growing their, their existing business. So as we continue to take on markets and media partners, they, they have a, a, a great way of, you know, we give them the tools and the ability to go out there and, and up, uh, upsell their um, campaigns. Right. Mm -hmm. so when do you think you're going to go beyond referral marketing, growing your business from referrals, and then and instead being more proactive in your marketing? When, when's that going to happen? And, if, and what is your plan? What marketing channels are you thinking about using to grow your business? Um, you know, the, the thing that we've, we've carefully structured our business, so we remain a, a debt-free company, um, that we grow at a pace that is um, reasonable um, within within our our resources that we have out there with uh, a lot of uh, companies out there you know they'll we'll try to they'll try to go too fast and, and too strong um, but you know probably sometime in 2019 we'll look at um, you know reaching out to some databases and, and reaching out to some of our um, lists and, and work with some uh, unique ways, whether it's email, um, some handwritten notes, some, you know, box, uh, some gimmick drops of, of getting people to understand who we are and what we do um, and look at those specific targets. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of your growth plans beyond 2018 going forward, um, what trends do you see that is impacting businesses that will uh, help your business, and at the same time, what trends do you see uh, can, pot can potentially hurt your business so you're going to avoid them? I know earlier we talked about how uh, due to technological improvements, more and more technology and services are becoming available to the SMB. So that's one trend that I think that fits uh, really nicely with what you're doing. Are there others that you see that can really help your business or hurt your business if you're on the wrong side of it? Right, right. You know, the... Uh, with things that can probably, you know, we have to figure out from our side and, and things that we look at um, as potential uh, pitfalls in our side is is probably one of the biggest ones is the, the new speech um, searches. So, you know, in, in past, you know, it was a very simple text search. Um, now with, um, you know, the, the home assistant, Siri and Alexa and Google, um, you know, how do we monetize those and, and what's, the, what's the strategy for those? And, and that's, a, that's kind of a tough thing that everybody in the business is going, okay, how do we, how do we figure out some way to, to work there? What are your preliminary thoughts about 
the speech searches and how you and your clients might be able to benefit from that? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's ways to integrate some of the businesses. Um, and then there's ways to make sure, you know, some of the biggest things that we're seeing, um, with our clients and, and especially right now is, is making sure their hours and their address and their phone number and, and all their information, all their vitals, so to speak, are published out there within the, the different directories, whether it's Google, Yahoo, or, or, you know, 65 other directories that we've identified that apps use um, to make sure that that's all correct. Um, because if, if those aren't there, um, it's going to be a problem. Um, you know, if you don't have the right information or, you, or you're not finding that near me um, scenario, we want to make sure that all that is, is, is wrapped up in that side of it. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it never seeks to amaze me when I uh, check out a, a restaurant site or a auto shop and they make it so hard for me to find their address, right? It's like, yeah. you know, make it easy. Right? Going back to what we talked about before, right? Where you, you want to make things, you want your mother to be able to figure these things out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you have to make that, you know, again, we talked about making it easy for our clients, but we also want to make it easy for that end user because if that end user does not have that um, ability to to simply go out, find where they they need to go quickly, then it's 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 going to be a it's going to be a problem as they go forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not even just not not just in the B to C space, but even B to B, right? It's like if you know if I have a problem, a business problem, I'm trying to solve, and it, if it takes me more than twenty seconds to figure out what's going on, I'm going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. You know, so so you got to make sure that that is. Um, simple and easy uh, for that client and, and they have no trips on that side. Right. Uh, two last questions for you, Todd. Who is your ideal client and what's the best way for them to get in touch with you to work with you and your team? Sure. Ideal client is one that pays their bills. Um, yeah, those no, are the best. Um, yeah, those are the best ones. Um, ideal client is, you know, somebody that has the passion of, Hey, we understand that, that digital is critical. We understand that um, there's ways that I want to grow my business. I want to go outside of our existing box that, that we've kind of pigeonholed ourselves in um, and, and find ways to understand and, and use that technology to benefit, you know, themselves as a customer or their, you know, customer base that they have. So, how can they, you know, be more successful? And, and our goal is to try to help them as much as possible with that. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Best way to get in touch, um, you can email Todd Swickard uh, at smartonemarketing.com, and that's going to be the uh, easiest way to, to, to reach out to me. Would you mind sharing how to spell the email address? Sure. Todd, T-O-D-D, -D, Swickard, S-W-I-C-K-A-R-D, and there's no dot or anything in there, um, at smart, the number one marketing, so smartonemarketing.com. All right, uh, fantastic. Uh, reach out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today, Todd, and sharing how you grew your company so fast. Mm -hmm. No problem. Appreciate the time. We've been speaking with Todd Swickard, the co-founder and CEO of Smart One Marketing, about his company's rapid growth. For interviews with other fast-growing companies or to learn how we can increase your firm's high-ticket sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.